Hello, I'm Kathy Davis with Presbyterian Healthcare Services. As we seek to keep our families and communities healthy, we know the value of partnering with you to prioritize and support you with access to healthy food, improved nutrition, and physical activity. And our children deserve every opportunity to have a healthy life. Why is this so important for all of us? Because we each have a role in creating healthy communities, and our children deserve every opportunity to grow up healthy and to be successful. After all, healthy kids become healthy adults. Coordinated programs at schools that increase daily activity, even by just 15 minutes a day, give access to healthier food, and have kids and parents work together for better health, increases healthier behaviors and decreases weight. Please join Presbyterian in learning more about healthy living so we can work together to improve health for ourselves, our families, our schools, and our communities. Thank you for watching and sharing this important video. Children who are obese become adolescents who are obese become adults who are obese. One in four of our kindergarten students are overweight or obese. By the time they're in third grade, 34% are overweight or obese. You can see where we get to 65% of adults in New Mexico are overweight or obese. We are increasingly seeing a number of young kids, 10 years or younger, with onset of type 2 diabetes. This is a disease that we never used to see in kids this young. As one gets older, the frequency of diabetes, of heart disease, of all sorts of medical conditions increases in those who are obese. If we continue on this trend, kids of today will not outlive their parents. One of the biggest issues that contributes is both parents have to work, and so you don't have one parent at home. And the second issue is increased use of technology. They're inside the home, on the TV screen, or on the computer screen, on the cell phone, more than they are outside. It's just a very hectic schedule, and I think that's a problem with eating healthy because it's more convenience and accessibility and time because I'm exhausted. I don't want to make like this healthy meal. I want something quick and easy. It's really hard to get students to really care about their nutrition and really understand the effects of the food that they're eating on a daily basis. What we know in the brain is that the hippocampus is smaller in people who have obesity. Why is that important? Because the hippocampus is where we store memory. Children with obesity are not doing as well in school, and if it's related to the fact that their memory is not as good a shape, that would make a lot of sense. I think our society is really built on today of, I want it now, where looking 50 years ahead to your health, it seems a long time, it doesn't really affect you. According to the Trust for America Health, the incidence of diabetes cardiac disease and hypertension are going to skyrocket especially in New Mexico, given our current state of overweight and obesity in our patients. Once you become overweight and obese, your body establishes this point 
for you called a set point. And um, even if you lose weight or get to a healthier weight, your body will constantly be trying to get back to that set point. So we want to try to prevent that, prevent the obesity, starting with our children at the youngest age that we can. We're a large rural frontier state where access to healthy local food supply can be challenging. Food distribution is over large distances, so we don't necessarily have the resources for people to make a healthy choice. You have food deserts. We have patients that come to clinic who will say, I would like to eat fruits and vegetables, but the reality is where I live, there is one convenience store and Albuquerque is over an hour away. So it is more convenient to buy prepackaged foods uh, for these families, which are high in calorie. We know that lower income families with higher rates of food insecurity tend to have uh, higher rates of obesity. There's that sort of obesity, poverty paradox, and food insecurity paradox that folks talk about. If we're hungry, how could it be overweight? The research shows that in low-income neighborhoods, there are very few to no full-service supermarkets and a disproportionate amount of fast food restaurants. So you have this barrier of physical access. Where are you going to get the fresh fruits and vegetables? On the other hand, you have the monetary aspect of it, which is that fresh fruits and vegetables are much more expensive than high calorie, high energy, dense foods. And so you have low income families who are dealing with two issues. Physical access, where do I find the fresh fruits and vegetables? And monetary access, how do I afford them? So today we have kale, chard, and salad greens. How much are they? Um, but because we're giving up to $10 free, if you want to try more than one, you're more than welcome to. We're at a mobile farmer's market here at First Choice Community Health Center, and we are at this clinic providing the patients, community members, um, and employees here fresh local produce and recipes, free samples and food demos to make eating healthy easy. Thank you so much. We can tear off some of the pieces from other stems too. Especially at this age, I think it's really important to teach kids exactly how to eat healthy and how sort of to prepare food in a way that'll make it taste good. Do it in like a circular sort of motion right along these little veins here. And before that, you can notice that the leaves are a little bit wet because we washed it. But you need to wash it. Exactly. It's also really important to give kids choice, we find. That facilitates a little more adventurous eating. You can kind of bang it on the side there. They're more likely to try it if they have some say or some way of helping in the preparation. Beautiful. Good job. Just giving them a sense of what healthy eating and cooking looks like. That goes out really fast. When I saw the kids cook part and they just jumped right in. You need one half tablespoon. It's really opened the door to different vegetables and a sense of healthy eating and, and good choices. Why do you want to eat the rainbow? Um, it's not like eating the rainbow that's up in the sky. It's having all kinds of different foods. And being and eating a rainbow is good for you because you're able to try new things instead of sticking to one thing all the time. And be healthy. And the brighter a food is, the more nutritious it is, naturally. That's true. There's lots of things that people can do to get healthier. One simple approach is to quit having sweetened beverages available in the home. If it's not available, there's less temptation and everyone is participating so no one feels like it's punitive. One of the big sweetened beverage products that we see, and it's a big trend that's been going on for quite some time, is Gatorade. Water hydrates and does a much better job. You don't have the effects of the sugar and other um, things that you don't need. Another one is Capri Sun, Kool-Aid, lemonade, tea. All of these things are all considered sweetened beverages. 
people think of orange juice as being healthy. However, it takes to make one eight ounce glass of orange juice approximately six large oranges. Can you imagine eating six oranges, how full you would get in one sitting? Whereas drinking a glass of orange juice doesn't have the same impact on your stomach. However, you still have all the calories of consuming six oranges and that contributes to the total calories for the day and liquid calories, which adds up. So when you look at labels, you have to be careful of what the label says. Um, you have to look at the number of servings. A lot of times you'll say, well, this doesn't have that many calories. But yet when you actually look at the label, it's eight servings and not just one serving. We're a large rural frontier state where there isn't a lot of opportunity for safe physical activity. You know, sidewalks and curbs and gutters and paved trails. Sometimes in these areas, when you ask a kid or their parent to go for a walk, well, sometimes that's not safe because there's dogs around or the roads aren't paved where it's accessible to, to walk. So sometimes these easy messages of going out and doing some physical activity isn't as easy as we all think. Where you eat, live, and play makes a huge contribution to how healthy you will be in the future. Children learn eating and physical activity behaviors at a very early age. We shape behaviors when kids are young. And if they're shaped to sit and watch movies or play on their video devices or not have much physical activity, then those are the behaviors that they adopt as they get older. Every morning we go out and um, run. We run every day. Um, so our kids start their day by going out for a, it's about a mile run after all is said and done. The whole school. Once in a while we'll get parents involved. They'll come out and run or walk with their child. The things that we have noticed, the kids are alert. They're ready to learn. In fact, it's key to our state testing coming up. They've tested this and shown you can get a statistically higher score on a test if you walk for 15 to 20 minutes before you take the test. I would bet it's partly because you're increasing the blood flow and the nutrients that are going to the brain when you exercise. And they come back and they have breakfast in the classroom. So there's no loss of instructional time. We gain it all back with the kids alert and ready to, to learn. Breakfast is actually very important to prevent obesity. Um, people have tried to just sort of skip meals. Um, but breakfast has been correlated with actually less weight gain. If we give them breakfast and we give them a good composition of that breakfast and we teach them how to move, they can then have control over their bodies and the hope downstream would be that they will have their hippocampus work better, get bigger and stay that way. Whether it's brain breaks in the classroom or physical activity, at least 15, 20 minutes a day, I think, that, I think we owe it to our students to, to do it. I don't think it's a it's I don't think it's an option.